Howdy, howdy, guys. This is the beginning of my absolute favorite section out of all of them. And that would be the animal kingdom. Anything and everything having to do with animals. I love it's chapter 26 in the book. This is going to be uh, section unit 12 to keep up with things. So this is 12 1. Here we go. All right. What is an animal? What does it mean to be an animal? Well, we learned a little bit about this when we started doing taxonomy is that they need to be heterotroph, so they can't make their own food. They need to be multicellular. They need to have cells with a nucleus. Their cells cannot have any cell walls, and their bodies need to be made out of different types of tissues, like muscular, epithelial, nervous, and connective. Now, there are always exceptions to every rule, um, but specifically this one, not all animals have muscles and stuff like that. So we'll get to know which animals do. Okay, so um, continuing on with what is an animal, there's two main groups of animals based on whether or not they have a backbone. And so this is a loose classification system of the fact that animals uh, that do not have a backbone are called the invertebrates, in without vertebrate, vertebra, backbone. And about 95% of all animals fit under this category. And then the other 5% are the vertebrates, or the things that do have a backbone. So here's an example, some pictures over here of a little bit of everything, all different types of animals. All right. What animals do to survive? All animals, uh, I'm sorry, I have a really bad cold. Blech, so I sound horrible. Um, what animals do to, to survive is to, uh, all animals need to maintain homeostasis. We learned that way back in chapter one that it's keeping uh, a stable internal environment. And so all animals need to do these couple of different things in order to survive. One of them is feeding. All animals need to eat in one way or another, whether it's absorb the nutrients directly through their skin, eat it with the mouth, whatever, they need to ingest food. All animals need to respire. They need to do respiration. So that means that they need to take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Um, most animals do it through lungs, it could be gills, it could again be directly through their skin as well. All animals need to be able to circulate things, um, circulate oxygen, circulate nutrients, hi cat, circulate waste, all those things need to go through um, their, it could either circulate through just a movement of their body, it could be tissues, um, you know, squeezing and contracting and moving things around. It could be an actual circulatory system like we have. Um, we're going to learn all the different ways that they can circulate. They all need to excrete. They need to get rid of waste or else build up of poisons and toxic waste can uh, kill them. So they need to get rid of waste. They need to be able to respond to their environment. They need to be able to um, you know, react, basically, whether good or bad. They need to be able to react. They need to be able to move. Um, now, it doesn't mean you know, get up and walk away. There's a lot of animals that live at the bottom of the ocean that are stuck there. Um, and, but they move. I mean, they can extend and contract. They don't get up and walk away, but they can still move. And then, of course, all animals need to reproduce. Most of them will do it sexually, uh, requiring a male and female partner. But some can reproduce asexually if there are no partners around. Pretty fun. All right, trends in animal evolution. Complex animals tend to have uh, high levels of cell specialization, which means instead of having one cell that does every job, you have uh, different cells that do a particular job and they all work together. They have internal body organization, which means that you have organs, basically, and each organ does its own specific thing. They have bilateral symmetry, which means that they have a left and a right half that are mirror images of each other. They have a front end or a head with uh, sense organs called cephalization when you have something that looks like a head and they usually have a body cavity. Now not all animals are like this, it's just the more complex ones. Now in early development of animals we all start out the same way. We have a sperm and an egg uh, which are the gametes and then they fertilize each other and then that forms one cell which is called the zygote and the zygote will turn into the animal of whatever our choice is. But before it does so what happens is that one cell turns into two, two to four, four to eight, and you get this big um, ball of cells that kind of folds in on itself and kind of makes what looks like to me a raspberry. And that thing is called a blastula. So down here, this word right here, blastula, that is what an um, 
after the cells start to reproduce. When they fold in, that's what we call it. It's also known as a hollow ball of cells. I got a cat that won't sit down. Then, uh, when the blastula is formed, it makes a little hole, and that hole is called the blastopore. So we blastopore. And blastia actually, oh no, that's morula. Never mind. Ignore what I was just saying. Okay, so the blastopore, that hole, eventually forms a tube that goes through the whole body, and that eventually will be your digestive system. But that hole will either become your mouth or your butt, depending on what type of animal you are. If the hole from the blastopore becomes your mouth, we call you protostomes. Proto first stome mouth, first mouth. But if you are um, an animal whose hole becomes your butt, well, then you're called a deuterostome. Duty, actually, duty means second. Um, but I just think of it's funny because, you know, duty, deuterostome, but yeah, whatever. All right, so anyway, so these are things that uh, where the hole becomes their butt. And we are duty, <laughs> now I'm going to call it deuterostomes. We are deuterostomes. Our holes became our butts. And, uh, and then as the, that tube became our digestive system, different cells around it started to specialize. And so there's usually three layers of specialized, specialized cells that form around that tube. You have what's called the endoderm. Endo meaning inside. Derm is just like layer of skin. And so an endoderm uh, ends up becoming your digestive system and your respiratory tract. So here's the tube. So this layer that's directly around the tube, endoderm, becomes your digestive tract and your respiratory. In the middle, we have the mesoderm. Meso meaning middle. And the mesoderm becomes your muscles, your circulatory system, and your reproductive system. And then we have the ecto. Ecto meaning outside. Ectoderm. This becomes the stuff on the outside, like your skin and your sense organs, but also some of the nerves that are attached to it as well. So here's a little picture to explain that. So we all start out as um, one cell turns into two, two to four, four to eight, and so on. So here's uh, animals at the eight cell stage. And you can see that the top four are a little bit smaller than the bottom four. Now if the top four kind of are twisted, uh, looks like someone rotated the top from the bottom as a, compared to this one where it all lines up nicely, um, you can see that's kind of an easy way to tell if you're going to become a protostome or a deuterostome. And then once the you get the hollow ball of cells, here's the each of these little dots is a is a ball of cells, uh, well cells, but this is the hollow part. Here's the blastopore, the little hole I was talking about, and so they're formed the same way, but and it ends up looking the same at the end. But as you can see, one of them in the protostome, that hole became the mouth, but in us it became the butt, and then vice versa for the other end of the hole. So. Um, kind of an odd thing. If we were taking a zoology class, we would be spending way more time on this, but that's all I need you to know. All right, um, there's different types of body symmetry that animals can take, uh, depending on how complex the animal is. There's, ooh, that was a bug. There's asymmetry, like sponges. They have no body pattern whatsoever. They grow in any which way they want, kind of like a plant does. We have radial symmetry, which uh, means shaped like a wheel. That would be something like a jellyfish or a sea star. And then we have bilateral symmetry, like I said earlier, when you have a left and a right, and, um, and they're usually mirror images of each other. And also, not only can you make them turn left and right, but you can also split them into front, back, up, and lower halves as well. So here's a picture showing uh, bilateral symmetry versus radial symmetry. Okay, um, animals may or may not have cephalization, which is just the, uh, basically, the ability to have a head. Um, the more you have a head with sense organs, you know, smell, taste, sight, hearing, in one central location, then we call that cephalization. So we have a high degree of cephalization because of the fact that we have a head. Whereas a jellyfish has no cephalization because he doesn't really have a head at all. Animals that do have cephalization typically move with their head first because they can pick up information and make decisions based upon what they picked up from those sense organs. In dealing with animals, we need to talk a little bit about directional terms. So we can say if something is dorsal, you know what I'm talking about. Anterior means towards the head. Posterior means towards the tail or the butt end. Uh, dorsal is your back. Ventral is your belly. So when we talk about animals, we'll be talking about 
something that's located on the ventral side versus the anterior side and so on. Segmentation is another thing we talk about with animals, which is just having body segments or um, you know, body divisions. And so we'll talk about more about that when we get into the animal groups. Body cavity formation. Um, we'll be talking about body cavities. A lot of animals don't have them. The more advanced you are, then you end up with a pocket inside of your body that holds all your organs. And that's your body cavity. Basically, it just provides room for all your organs to grow. So here's an example. Here's a flatworm. He doesn't have a body cavity. He's just got a tube where food goes through and then his tissues. This one, he's got a food. He's got a little bit of a cavity here and then tissues. And then this one right here, these two things on the side, those are actual body cavities. All right, types of animals. We're going to be spending the rest of the school year going uh, through each of the different animal phyla. So we have sponges, periphera, which means sponge bearing. We talked about this with uh, the taxonomy stuff a couple of weeks ago. These guys are multicellular. They're asymmetrical. They have no body shape. Nidarians, which are jellyfish and coral in their tissues. These are the first guys to show um, specialized tissue. Platyhelminthes, flatworms. This is uh, a pretty one. Some of them could be like tapeworms inside of your body. Gross. These are the first guys to show bilateral symmetry. Nematodes or roundworms. Ow. My cat's biting me. Ow. And these are usually parasitic, and these are the first guys to show what's called a pseudocelum or pseudocelum. And uh, what that means is that they have a fake body cavity. And then we have mollusks, mollusca. These are clams, snails, and squids. And these are the first animals to have a true coelom body cavity. Annelida, uh, which is segmented worms. These are things like earthworms and leeches and these cool looking things called polychaetes. And these are the first group of animals to have segmented, I'm almost done, have uh, segmented bodies. Then we have arthropoda, which are insects, spiders, and crustaceans. And these are the first ones, uh, animal group, to have jointed appendages. Then we have echinodermata, which are starfish and their relatives. And these are the first ones to be deuterostomes. These are the ones that have the hole that turns into their butt instead of their mouth. And then we have chordata, which is us and all our, the animals we typically think of. And these are the first ones to have a notochord, which is basically our spinal cord. And that is it for today. So I will talk to you all tomorrow about animals. Bye.